The sickness of 1603 took the lives of every villager in all of Wormsdale County, Kent, save for two small children, one not above four years of her age and the other not much advanced, who would certainly have died also, but that they suckled a goat. The older of these children was Joan. Her mother was the first taken. In not much more than a summer's day, the swellings erupted over her mother's body, so you would hardly know her for the same woman. Her neck grew lumps the size of apples, and she shook with fever and could not get out of bed. Her nan sent Joan to the garden for rosemary and then burnt it in a pot in the middle of the room. They washed the floors down with vinegar and soaked sorrel overnight that in the morning she might eat it, but she threw it up, and in two more days she was gone and buried. The fat baby Joan loved to make laugh followed. The days after took her stern old nan and then Mary, her sister of eight year, and her brother of ten. Joan wept anew each time one was still to think what she'd lost. Mary, her hand when Nan's tongue got at them. Geoffrey, his flute and the joy in his eyes. Their mother, her strength like a willow. And what they became before they died, not themselves but husks of themselves, haunted her dreams. Joan feared to close her eyes for the visions that then came before them. Each day and week brought more deaths until there were hardly a dozen alive in the village, so her father said, with fists rubbing his eyes. Others, all who had full enough purse to do so, had fled. The sickness was God's punishment, said the curate, and they must look among themselves for their wrongdoing, but Joan could not think what wrong they had all done, and surely God had no cause to spare her and her alone. Therefore she must sicken and die in her turn. She felt her neck and watched and waited, but it was her father who felt the fever first. She came upon him digging a hole in back of the smithy. Dig you a grave, she asked. Yea, said he, you're too small to get me into the ground. I must needs do it myself. No, Papa, you shall be spared, said she. His very precaution would spare him, she thought. It is those who think they will be spared who die. Those who expect it must not. Death comes to us all, said he. You must call on my sister Mary Dance to care for you, said he. She burned Rosemary again, and so smoked out the room of bad air. She gave her father rue and sorrel. She cooled his forehead with a cloth. Bless you, Joan, said he. You must call on my sister to care for you. Bless you, Joan, said he, when she cleaned the sick from his chin and emptied the bucket in the privy. Bless you when she trickled ale into his mouth. She prayed he might be the one to live. Bless you, Joan, said he in the middle of the night when she lay awake on straw by the fire. In the morning, he was worse, the fever wasting him, the lumps enormous and green. Bless you, Mary, he said now, mistaking her for her sister or her mother. He rose and staggered out the door to his grave where he lay down in it.